Hello, this is David and uh, welcome to week three. I want to go over very quickly some of the key highlights for this week. In week three, you'll be dealing with writing your instructional evaluation plan, your IE plan. Now, in this course, you are 693, you are writing your instructional evaluation plan. In the next course, 695, you will implement that IE plan. So that's what we're doing. We are preparing an important part of your capstone experience, and that is your IE plan. In other words, how you are going to go about evaluating the instructional aspects of your website. So with that in mind, let's take a look at some of the components here in Module 3, Week 3. First, we have the readings. Let's take a look at those. These readings are actually important this week. In the Kirkpatrick's four levels, I want you to pay attention to only level one and level two. Those are the two Kirkpatrick levels that you'll be evaluating with your IE plan. Level one is reactions, often called the sniff test. Do they like it or not like it? Were they okay with it? Did they revolt against it? Are they? Was it something that they that they really uh, got a lot out of? In other words, a Likert type scale on from uh, loved it to hated it. Uh, level two is learning, and here you're going to assess the amount of learning and kind of learning that that takes place. This is where you will need to have a pretest and a post test. You'll want your students, and this is going to be part of your capstone, you want your students to take a pretest to measure the acquisition they have of the skills and knowledge that you're introducing in your website. And then after they go through the website, you'll give a post test to measure how much of that knowledge and how many of those skills they were able to master. So those are the only two Kirkpatrick levels that you're dealing with in your IE plan. And again, those are the reactionary level and the learning level, which consists of a pre and post test to measure the amount of learning. We'll talk more about these in just a moment as we go through some of the sample evaluation plans that have come from past students. The diff difference between formative and summative evaluation is something that you guys have already dealt with in your previous classes, so we won't spend a whole lot of time on it. As you know, formative evaluation is an evaluation done so that you can collect results to help you in the design and implementation and development phase. In other words, formative evaluations are results that are, have a heuristic value or something that would be applied in some sort of work. That, that you're doing. That is contrast with the uh, other kinds of evaluation, often grouped into the term summative evaluations. Summative evaluations are the end point. They are the tests that measure how much was accomplished, how much was learned. They're often the basis of giving a grade. So formative evaluations, you're trying to help students and summative evaluations, you are measuring students or you're evaluating students. So those are the two key evaluations. There are other kinds, but we're not going to get into them in this course. Okay, in your discussion, as you can probably imagine, you're going to post the uh, sample plans. You're going to post your IE plan for your classmate to evaluate. This says uh, at least two classmates. Uh, you only have one other classmate in this section. So you will be evaluating only one other evaluation plan. When you do evaluate each other's plans, be sure to use these bullet points. In your evaluation, you should have your evaluation divided up by its introduction, your comments, its instructional goals, your comments on that, and then there should be a list of evaluator names, a list of evaluations to be conducted, 
study limits again we'll look at those in just a second and then your your references and you will need to have appendices uh, this week because the appendices are going to contain the actual evaluation instruments that you're going to administer so in this case this week you probably want to do your discussion board last you want to go ahead and do your IE plan first and once you've gotten that all together of course, then you're going to post it to the discussion board and then evaluate each other's. As we've discussed before, because the due date in this class is Sunday night, you're certainly welcome to take Monday and Tuesday to evaluate or complete, I should say, this particular kind of discussion board when you're evaluating your classmates. Okay, continuing on with the content and coursework that we're going to be doing. Here is the IE plan that we need to discuss in detail. Instructional Evaluation Plan. Now, you should have, again, these seven parts, or is it eight parts? Seven parts. Your, your IE plan must contain those seven parts. And then you are going to implement that plan in your next course. In your next course, you're going to implement your evaluation plan to people who will be evaluating or reacting to your site. You don't have to worry about those people right now. And again, you're not going to ask them to complete their evaluation until the next course, 695. So right now, you're just getting things together so that you can conduct an instructional evaluation in the next course. Who will these people be who will be evaluating your course? You need to get together uh, a group of people as various kinds of people as you can imagine. Here, as you can see, the instructions suggest a mixed group so that you can get a broad range of reactions. Those can be teachers, administrators, SMEs, and then certainly students. And those don't have to be your students. And then of course, family and, and or friends. You want to get a wide range of reactions because remember, you're publishing a website and this website's gonna be available on the World Wide Web, possibly to a wide variety of people. You might not even know as of right now, <clears throat> all the different groups who may eventually be interested in your website so you want to make this as broad as possible your goal in contacting these people and having them conduct evaluations is strictly technical at this point strictly technical uh, you want them to confirm in the case of SMEs you want them to confirm your content and the educational benefit of that content so those are your two primary goals make sure everything works you clicks and your clacks and also get some experts in there who can approve go along with validate the uh, the content and what you're trying to do with it let's take a look at one of these instructional evaluation templates now you must follow this template this is this template is going to become your evaluation plan, I should say, is going to become part of your capstone report in the next course. And that capstone re report and the evaluation plan that it contains are more than just a plan at that point. You're actually going to conduct the evaluation, but you certainly suggest the plan first, must contain these items, an introduction, and in that introduction, you're going to accomplish these four bullet points definition of IE rationale for your testing your product title and then your target learners then you list your instructional goals and those need to be formulated as a goal beginning with that verb and they, the, those goals need to be measurable of course then you come to the Roman three, and here you need to actually list, actually list the names of 
the people who are going to help you out during this phase. Their name and their title, if you're using a student, then their title is student in certain grade at such and such school. Uh, credentials, only if applicable. This is certainly uh, the case with your SMEs, subject matter experts, but not with the, with the students. And then any other background information, are they a SME, are they a novice learner, are they a trainee, etc. Are they a professional already working in this field? And then here come the evaluations. Now, in this IE plan, you're going to list and describe the instructional evaluations that you're going to conduct. Then again, these have to be Kirkpatrick's level of one and two, uh, reaction and learning. When in the instructional design process are you going to be doing this evalu evaluating? Uh, will it be in the SME, uh, in a design stage? Will it be your students in the development and implementation stage? So please list at what stage these evaluations are going to be conducted. And again, different evaluators will play a role at different times in your instructional design process. Now, when it comes to the instructional instruments, you do want to refer to them here in the body of this document. You discuss them, you describe them, you list and describe them. But then you must also provide an example of that evaluation instrument as part of your appendices. And we're going to take a look at those in just a moment. You must have at least one example of each of these, a pretest, a post-test, and a reaction instrument. The Your Piscurich uh, text, I think it's chapter six, has a lot of reaction instruments, but you can also use some of the reaction in instruments that you're going to see in some of these sample papers that we are about to go over. Now, you are not required to create an evaluation instrument used by Swedes. However, you should account for all kinds of assessment. Here are the different kinds of assessments. You could do an informal walkthrough of a paper prototype. And that's kind of what we've been doing whenever looking at your site maps. That's a paper prototype. Then there's the formal heuristic review. That's again checking to make sure everything works and the content is valid according to the content standards for that particular discipline. And then you want to have an exit questionnaire that a SME fills out. You also want to speak to the study limitations. Let's hold off on that and let me bring up some examples of these uh, uh, IE plans. Here is, I think, Julie Hatch. Yeah, Julie Hatch. So here's her introduction. Here she describes what an evaluation instrument is, discusses the role of an evaluation instrument, its development, and she does so by uh, referencing with citations different sources. Then Julie outlines the instructional goals of her, I should say instructional goal, you only have one, instructional goal and objectives of her site. Her overall goal is for your, those students to be able to name a fraction and its parts and to understand those fractions well enough so that they can represent fractions. They're going to be able to determine fractional equivalents and they're going to be able to solve a variety of real life fraction word problems. So those are her instructional goals for her website and she's now listing them here in her IE plan. Here she makes a list of evaluators she plans to use, plans to use. Uh, if these people end up not being available, then you will have to delete them and perhaps add somebody else. But this should be considered as simply a beginning list, a beginning list of people you plan to ask. Now, I highly recommend that you go ahead and make some contact with them so that you don't have to end up changing, uh, modifying this list a whole lot. But as you can see, there are math coaches that she works with. 
of the principal that she works with, other teachers that she works with, and she even uses her own husband, who is a, a math minor and public math school tutor. And I think one of them is her son, yes. She had her college-age son also book, be an evaluator of her site. So as you can see, there's a pretty wide range here of the types of people and their various roles when it comes to listing your evaluators. Oh, and my, yes, don't leave this out, David. Uh, she's also going to include actual students. Now, if you don't have access to actual students, don't worry about it. But if you do have access to students, this would be a great time to ask a few of them to volunteer to be evaluators. Here she lists the evaluations that she's going to conduct. She's going to be conducting level one and two of Kirkpatrick's. And she um, then lists the different uh, evaluation instruments, when they're going to be implemented, and to whom they're going to be implemented, as well as the Kirkpatrick level that they apply to. So here is her reaction instrument survey, of course, design and understanding fractions. And this is a Google form that she's going to include in her Appendix A. That measures a Kirkpatrick level one reaction. She's going to administer it to her instructional designers, her SMEs, teachers, who are Google certified educators. And again, this is for her design stage. Here's another one for design stage. And then in her development stage, this is where she brings in students. This is when she starts giving her pre and post test. And here are her study limitations. These are the typical ones that you're going to have to deal with. They're going to have to have some kind of internet or desktop laptop web access and you need to plan for how you're going to be giving students access if you're going to be using students. Uh, here these are identified as humans and in the case of students you it is noted that you're going to have to get parental permission. Whenever you conduct testing, I think you've studied this in one of your previous courses, any kind of human testing involves that person's prior permission before the testing takes place. That wasn't always the case. It changed in the 1960s. Thank God it did after some real scandals. But now the standard is you must get prior permission from the testee before that testing takes place. You won't have any financial concerns here. It's not always the case. And then the time here is not going to be pre any anything substantial that I think you have to worry about. Let's take a look at some of those appendices. There are her references. Here you see that she's going to be using this survey for course design. This is that pre and post test survey that we were talking about. And again, you can look at these different IE plans that I have listed in your course room, and you can see all the different appendices that are available to you there. So here's her appendix for the reaction survey. That's the first level of Kirkpatrick 1. It's the sniff test. Her next appendix is a survey of content. This is her SME test. And she gets some content area questions here. And then I think there's one more. Yeah, Appendix C. Understanding fractions for grade three. Again, this is part of her pre and post testing regimen. And these tests are already well formatted. And ready to go. Oh, she ends with a fourth test given to the students. Uh, here's Katie Kears. Katie uh, was an employee at National University. I believe she was a counselor, a career academic coach. And so her IE plan, her website was designed for students at National University. It was called Empowering Balance, teaching these students how to best balance their life and time in order to make the most out of their college career. And here again, you'll notice that how the template is being followed 
introduction, which he discusses the, the role of instructional evaluation in the kind of planning and uh, website development that's being conducted here. Her instructional goals, the evaluators she will use, and then the evaluation she will use. She discusses each one, but sends you to the appendix for the actual examples of them. In her evaluation, she discusses or describes what the evaluation is and why she is using it. Here's her study limitations. And then come the evaluations. Pre and post test. What else she got? Reaction survey. Another reaction survey. I bet you those two reaction surveys were given at two different times. Or there's two different people. I'd have to look more closely at it. And so it goes. Here's Rosemary, I believe. Rosemary, excuse me. You'll see the same thing going on. Introduction. Instructional goal. Evaluators. The evaluations to be used. And there it is, study, study limits and constraints. Sorry, I passed over. References and then the instruments. So I gave you lots of examples here it's so that you would have as many of these instruments to draw upon as you need. Again, you can also pl find pl plenty of these instruments in the Piscourage. Uh, book for this class. So that's about it. You are writing again for week three your instructional evaluation plan. You are not administering this plan. You are simply developing it, having it reviewed, and refining the plan. You will implement this plan in the next course, 695. Okay, I'll wrap it up there, and you guys be sure to contact me if I can answer any questions for you.